Today on Bob Eats Vegas, I'm gonna take out the Rolls Royce Phantom. We're gonna go check out this new Fontaine Blue. Heard there's a pretty good burger joint there. Let's go. So here it is, Fontaine Blue. Fontaine Blue, okay. Took them forever to build this thing. That's cool, look, there's a car. That car is pretty cool. That's kind of neat. Is it Rolls? No, it's like some kind of, I can't tell what it is, it's some kind of muscle car. But we're, we're gonna take the Phantom right across the street from Circus Circus, a little sketchy neighborhood, but we're gonna roll in here and, and uh, get a burger. Eat a burger. Eat a burger. Hey, it's Video Bob and Chef Joey. We're gonna go check out uh, the Fontaine Blue burger place in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Capones? Capons? Capons. 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 We're gonna go there, try out their hamburger, and see if it's any good. And we're rolling in the Phantom. So um, mm. let's check it out. Here we go, walking inside. I've never been in here. Wow, a super high ceiling. That's like 100 feet in the air. Got some kind of big giant gold and silver blob of, uh, kind of looks like the, you know, the T-3000 when he got shot by a shotgun. Have you seen this boy? I don't know, it's some kind of crazy art. I don't know if that's real gold over there. I'll go chip a little off and try to pawn it and see what happens. But in the meantime, uh, pretty cool artwork. It's really nice. This is a brand new place. I like it. Let's go find this burger joint. This is the this is the top version of this. That's I don't know what that thing is. It had to be hard to make though. It had to cost millions of dollars. But uh, oh, there's the promenade. A lot of wasted clean space. You got all this just nothing. It's just bunch of nothing. Bunch of just money spent. Nothing going on. I mean. Not a lot of advertising or signage. Got a nice uh, outdoor area. So I guess they want to do conferences here. Nice, beautiful outdoor area to hang out and either roast to death in the sun when it's hot or freeze to death when it's cold. But basically there's a whole bunch of nothing. I feel like I'm walking through a, like a hospital or a high school or something. It's like, or a museum, I don't know. I like the pictures, but it's very clean and white. I'm just, I'm just not used to seeing so much like nothingness. This place was vacant for like a decade. Like it just sat here while they were building it. And then all of a sudden it was open. I wonder, I don't know how much of this was done and when they got what done, but it took them a long, long time to figure it out. Like, look at these just wide open spaces. Oh so, yeah, you got a big theater. Were, uh, big, beautiful doors. Adjusting. But like, just what a giant open space. Okay, look at this poppy steak. I gotta check that out. I gotta call you daddy. I love it. It looks good though. This is cool. I like it. I mean, it's classy. It's all brand new. There's no scrubs here. Let's get a look. You get it. This gives you a chance. To, which it reminds me of being at the airport. You did you? When you come into when you come into McGarren or now Harry Reid. It kind of looks like this when you first go in. Just imagine a baggage carousel. Look at that bar down there. It's, it is beautiful though. Good lord, it's gorgeous. The chandelier there, gazillion bucks on that. Nice wall art, nice ceiling tiles. 10,000 cameras. Yet some more escalators. Um, but um, it's very nice. Yeah. Get some mall walkers. If you want to just come here and walk, maybe that's going to be future space. I don't know. We're recording this on a Sunday afternoon. It is, what, three, three o'clock? I wanted to come when there's nobody here. I didn't know this was a food court, right? I thought it was a restaurant, but it's a high-end food court. Before we go over to, to, to Capons, Capones, whatever it is called, We'll ask him the proper pronunciation here in a minute, but you got a Miami slice. I don't know what that means. It means a guy from Miami is like, I cut you, man, and he stabs you, and then he takes you off. I don't know. There's a roadside taco, just what I needed. Here in Vegas, we have actual roadside taco. You can go around anywhere and find a group of, uh, you know, people who just got here making tacos on a folding table. So I don't need any of that. Let's see, homemade sandwiches. I can do that at my house. Homemade. I don't think they understand what it's called restaurant made. If they do they make sandwiches at home and bring them uh, in? I guess so. Yeah. I hate it when they use that term homemade. That's called restaurant made. It's made in a restaurant. 
All right, I'm already bored. Let's go over here to the hamburger place and see if it's all that. Okay, I've heard this place is awesome. I've heard it's great. I like the pictures on the menu so far. I like uh, the design of it. It looks beautiful. They got some shakes, right? They got some drizzles. They got some sauces. $14 for something with sauce on it. There's a line for me. We got here at the wrong time. Everybody showed up as soon as we got here. There was nobody here, and then everybody showed up. All right, we got ice cream shapes. Well, that's kind of what shapes are made out of ice cream, I guess. Gelato. All right, I like it. Oh my God, look at all, look at this banana cream pie gelato. That is insane looking. That looks so good. I gotta try something, maybe. This is just what I needed for today. Look at that thing. Look at that. What do you think? Ooh. Looking at the prices of the menu, it's actually not that expensive. You know, like $13 for the burger. That's like what it costs to go to McDonald's, Burger King and stuff. Wendy's gonna start surge pricing. You get, what, four hours of free parking here as a local, I think, or maybe it's for everybody, I don't know. But um, if you were near here, I would say come here for lunch, for sure. Yeah, that's a big ass set of fries. Oh, so you know what? They're, they have the same waffle fries covered in their extra goo. Big thing of onion rings. I did. This is the smokehouse. That's one he ordered. We're gonna just split them. Let's see. Okay, I can't open it. This is a two-handed operation, Joey. I got you. It's on. It's on there tight. Yeah, they cut them in half too. Look at that. That's. Yeah, okay, cut it in half. What kind of bun is that, a potato bun? Potato bun. There it is. That looks pretty good. We're gonna split them and uh, see how they roll. We're just gonna shoot. That's a, a, that's a big portion. That's a, that's a, we're not gonna be, look at that, that's a trough. That's a trough. There's a lot going on here at pack. I'll just take, I'll take the, the blanket. The I'll just take this out and get the, oh, there's a pretty bun. It's all sorts of, uh, Crumbly's going on. It's not that big of a burger, I gotta say. It's good for me, though. This one's the smokehouse burger. Let me uh, do my obligatory, get that into the lens. There you go. That's my screenshot. That's my thumbnail. Hey, buddy. So, so Chef Joey guy. over here, you're your hamburger maker. Cheers, it's good. That's kind of, it's a, what do you say, it's probably a quarter pound burger, maybe. It's kind of small. Probably, you know what? It, I think five ounce. a lot of burgers are too big. Five ounce. That's good. I'm not nice a big fan of the crumblies, though. Oh, the little, the little, um, oh yeah, the onion straw. Onion, 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 onion straw. Onion onion straw. Onion. You got some bacon jam. Bacon jam. Let's try that with you. That's my jam. Is that your jam? That's my jam. Okay. okay. All right. Well seasoned. Well seasoned. A little salty. Mm -hmm. But good. Not bad. Bacon's gonna be salty already. I find that a lot of places they don't season the beef. They do not season the burgers. Obviously, burgers, not seasoned. Not a problem. Fix this. There you go. Yeah, the Bobby Flay burger I wasn't impressed with. That's why I haven't gotten on the channel. Had it before. Sorry, Bobby. What good? Um, I got. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the crunchers. That's why I didn't order this burger. Like he ordered this more gas, ordered the classic. But I thought, hey, since we're gonna have both of them, we'll, both, we'll try them both. Bobby Flay's another one to put potato chips on the burger. Mm -hmm. I don't want crunchy stuff on my burger. Believe it or not, I, I usually I don't like bacon on my person. I like the egg on it. So it's not bad. I would prefer it without the punches. Smokehouse had what else? Some uh, they're trying to they're trying to do a little barbecue kind of thing with the sauce. Mm -hmm. The classic. I think you're really gonna like the classic. Well, that's. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna like it better. And we'll get to that here in a minute. It doesn't suck. Never said it sucks. It's good. 
but um, I'm not a fan. Believe it or not, I'm not a big fan of the Bay. And um, the reason is simply because, well, this is, I think bacon jam is better than regular bacon. So I don't like when you, either the bacon's too dry and crispy, and it crumbles, which I don't like, or it's soft and then it folds out and it's laying on your chin. Definitely more salt in this one than the, the Oh, you've already tried both. I tried both. I'm just a, I'm just a pig. I'm just going to go for both. Going for it. All right. Let's try the other one now. No, I'm a, I'm a dude who likes an In-N-Out burger. I'm not going to lie. So this has like a thousand island, I think, from what I could tell. Got some dill pickle chips so, on there. They call it schmear. It's their famous schmear. Schmear. Were they Jewish? Mm -hmm. Schmear is cream cheese. I guess schmear could be anything. Right, schmear. I don't normally like lettuce on the burger. I'm going to try it with the lettuce. Just to, just it's, not it's not too much. I like the original better. Yeah, you know I mean, see, to me, you don't. Really, if, you can put too much stuff on a burger. You can overdo it. More doesn't always mean better. There are certain times where it's just like, if you're not using good meat, if you're not using a good bun, if, if you don't have good basic ingredients. And now this is a good burger. Now, this is only $13, and I say only. That's it's actually very reasonable. We're in Las Vegas. The entire city is on airport pricing. It's on baseball game pricing. You're going to pay 12 bucks for a hot dog. You're going to pay six, seven dollars for a coke. Especially this place is it's absolutely just beautiful. And you, would, you would think it'd be a more more expensive. They're, they're exactly trying. Very they're, they're trying to run hand, you know, neck and neck with the wind next door. Yeah. And and I can say, I don't know, but there's only a few other places that I would say is. I don't want to use the word nicer. You know, with Caesars, it's the mm -hmm. got the marble and the Roma thing, but it's very nice. It's very sterile feeling. Yeah, it does. I feel like I'm in a high-end airport. Like Switzerland. I take an airport for rich people. I don't know if that's a, a, a positive review or not. But it's very I'm just clean. shocked that it's a little bit of a, it's a very unthemed vibe. They're like, hey, let's just make it as plain and sterile, we're, we're not catering to anybody, we're not being offensive in any way, there's no way you could be in, in here and be pissed off at anything. I'm just shocked how few people are actually here. I'm shocked. It's a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock in Las Vegas, beautiful day out, and, um, I, I, and you know, Eric didn't want to come because he goes, ah, oh, it's going to be all busy, I was going to bring Eric, but I go, hey, nobody's going to be here. All right, let's try this onion ring out, we're going to try this broken one there. Huh? Nice batter to onion ratio. I think it's kind of a. What's in that batter? Is there cornmeal in that batter? A little bit of cornmeal. Or polenta or something. Yeah, there is something in it. It's like corn dog. Right. Consistency. That's exactly what it is. That's, those are good. They must be good. They really. Are they, they really, battering these here? I didn't see. Um, I can't tell, but I've never seen these. You know, from Cisco. I'm an onion ring guy. Those are good onion rings again. Those are good onion rings. Right. This is a small burger. But listen, some of you people out there are way too fat. You're eating too much. <laughs> you got your big gosh darn bellies. What's with these chicks walking around with belly shirts with a body built like an ice cream cone? Nobody said to them, hey, don't leave the house on that. I'm the guy that's going to say it. I keep seeing it. Stop it. Go back to the moo moo or stop eating five burgers. And this is a good place to start. Have a nice small burger. I order the small burgers. I tell them to cut it in half. And I take, I'm already basically full. And, I, and I'm not gonna eat all this. I'll probably throw it out. But the thing is, is I would rather throw food away than have it be on my, you know, on my body. I'd rather throw away a burger than have it on my ass. Because I have no ass at all. You, I, I need a burger. You probably need a burger for that. I, I need to put one of these burgers in each of my back pockets so I'll look like I have an ass. This is why I wear suspenders, because I have nothing to hold them up. All right, I'm going to lose this lettuce. It's quite frankly, lettuce, I just I don't, like, I don't like lettuce. I love Caesar salad. This ain't a salad. And I know lettuce, tomato, 
has always been part of the burger experience. But listen, it's my burger. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I definitely like the classic better. I see what you're saying. It's just too much going on with the other one. It just um, overpowers the meat. And um, yeah, it's just too rich. I couldn't. This is why, in my opinion, the gold standard of burgers, not only in Vegas, but on the planet Earth, is Gordon Ramsay Burger. I maintain that. I'll take the pension challenge with anything you got. Blindfold me, line your burgers up, and I'll tell you why. It's because of their grind and their bun. This potato bun is good, but it's still very dense. I don't know what it is that Gordon Ramsay is doing to their burgers. They're great. But you can slice through that thing with a butter knife, like cake. It has the consistency of cake. And it's flavorful throughout. See, what, what you'll find with a lot of hamburgers, this is why I don't like Whataburger. They just brought a Whataburger here to Las Vegas. Whataburgers were created in Texas, then eventually bought by a Chicago company. I find their burgers to be over-seasoned, salty trash. And a lot, of, a lot of mustard as well. They use a ton of mustard. That's a Texas thing, mustard and onions. And I can remember a time that they're good, but they're really only good when you're getting them in the middle of the night when you're drunk, 3 a.m. But that's a perfect example to me of just, you know, trying to put frosting on a turd and make it into a cake. They start with the most grisly meat that you can get. When you're eating a water water burger, you're spitting out bones and gristle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Their onions are good, but they're way overpowered. And it's like, so what I like is a fine brine. I'm pretty sure, I haven't even investigated this. Based on what I can tell, there's a brisket grind in this meat. Yeah, it's a, it's a proprietary blend. If I had to guess, I would say it's brisket. Mm -hmm. I taste a little short rib, short rib in there. And I definitely see that there's either, I think Chuck as well. That was your nickname in high school, short rib. Short rib. Now it's shorter Chef Joe. We're gonna get that started. No, but you're right. And so. No, it's a, it's a three blend, I can tell. It might, you know what? It could be brisket, short rib, and Chuck. I think that's what it is. You'll have to ask him. Yeah. Nope, we know these things. Try these. I haven't tried the uh, fries yet. Yeah, get in there, guys. Before they get cold. Yeah. Try this. Little Chick fil A waffle fry. I know exactly what you're going to say. They probably should have cooked about 30 seconds longer. They're not crisp enough. They're not crisp enough. They're a little cold, and we've only been sitting here five minutes. But um, the waffle fries are known to hold their heat, and these are cold and they're limp. I'm a crinkle cut lover. I love crinkle cuts. Those are my favorite. My favorite French fry is a super crispy crinkle cut with that paprika based seasoning on it. Right. I don't think I've ever had the fries at my restaurant, but I used to coat them with that. I used to call it crack. But um, they're, everybody's going crazy with the uh, truffle aioli and the this and that. And it's really just a way to upcharge French fries. As a restaurant owner, now we're, talk, we're talking about 2009. My cost per fry order was 27 cents. I know. Okay, that was a half a pound of fries. Okay, you got eight ounces of fries for $2.49 in my restaurant. So it was a high profit item. Sure. And I remember struggling over charging for certain flavor add-ons. Like for instance, sour cream. I remember, what should I charge for sour cream? And I realized, when I would go to a restaurant, I say, you want sour cream? I just go, yeah. I never said, how much do you do? Yeah, yeah, sure. And you look on the bill, and it's three bucks. Yeah, but you, 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 you proportioned everything. I portioned everything, everything exactly. That's how you make money. Me and Rachel used to prep. We would sit there with a scale, and we would portion out exactly eight ounces of fries. Put them in a baggie, and we would prep that before, before our food run. They, we didn't just dump fries in there and then just scoop them in. We knew exactly to the penny what every single food cost was. That's why we were profitable first month. Because everybody who had had the restaurant before me had crawled out of there, bleeding. So I would literally count onion rings. 
You weigh them out. Oh, yeah. You have to. These are good. I'm not even doing ketchup on it. But. I like the onion rings. Great. Good break. And I think if these were, it's a technique issue, if they just would have left them in the fryer for 30 seconds more. But when they don't have that GBD, goat brown delicious look to them, you just know, especially when you're going to put a bunch of sauce, especially a mayo-based sauce on top of it, it just makes it soggy and really not all that appealing. I mean, well, in my opinion, people's allergies have ruined fries forever. I used to like to use peanut oil. Oh, yeah. In my restaurant. Oh, that's the best. Very expensive. Most expensive, though. I actually fry in avocado oil at home in pot. But that's like $50 for the oil. Oh, yes. The best thing you can fry your fries at, though, is real beef tallow, which used to be the secret to McDonald's fries. Oh, yeah. And then they had to change that because a bunch of the, the trans fans, a bunch, bunch of the, the people were complaining about it. So. When you're using the world's cheapest canola oil, it just leaves a waxy taste on your mouth. And that's one of the things that's ruined fries. So how do they compete with that? They just salt the shit out of them and slather them with some kind of aioli. But uh, other than that, that's why almost all fast food fries are coated fries. To deal with the crappy oil that they got. The only place in town that I know of, I think in the world, that's it's making their fries in lard is the Heart Attack Grill, which I haven't been to yet. Maybe I'll go, but that's kind of a famous place. So I don't know if that's worthy enough of, of being rated, but it is a local restaurant. I don't think a local, though, would go down to Fremont Street. I mean, you... I live downtown, so I'd go down there. You live right down there. How, when's the last time you ate that? I can't even tell. What about one of the steaks that... Frontier or something. You know. What was the place you used to like to go? Binion's, the little restaurant back there? Yeah, yeah. I went back there, I didn't knock my socks out. Yeah. There's more to my reviews than just the food I got because you have to consider parking. You have to consider oh, the yeah. cost of the total experience. You have to pay for parking. You have to go do a lot of walking. That ruins it. That's one good thing. Another good thing that I like about this place, free parking for first four hours. Four hours. Valet, $40. So if you drive a Rolls Royce, it's probably worth it to valet. You know, Bob doesn't like anyone driving his car, so he does it himself. But, you know, um, I went to the Venetian, which actually worked in the event, uh, last uh, Tuesday night. Just for me to go in and work an event, three hours, it cost me twenty-eight dollars to park. That's they didn't have a way to. And I'm a local, and they said, "No, no, no sorry, we don't they do that." Validate. No. Joining validate. That's right. Any validation, validation, man. But Caesars and MGM, all the properties, if you're a local or if you have their credit card, like you and I do. Well, the trick, the trick is I've talked about on my other channel lots of times. In order to live here, first of all, very distracted because that shit is super hot. That's a boot tank. That's like two thousand dollars an hour. So we're all looking. We're gonna live here. I just saw on the news they said you need to make at least sixty-seven thousand dollars a year to be living here, because the average apartment lease is seventeen hundred dollars. This is not a place for poor people. You work here, you're going to be living in North Vegas or having a roommate, and uh, it's it's not a place to move uh, unless you have an opportunity that's going to pay you over 100000 a year, in my opinion. Yeah, I do. That's it. You're not going to have the same fun experience. Here's a life hack for anybody who works as a server who handles people's money. Get yourself both a Caesars credit card, which is a Visa, and an MGM M Life MasterCard. They're very easy to get, they're easy to qualify. They're low number cards, like $5,000 limit. 
they will automatically give you something like 50,000 points just for joining. And they'll automatically give you a, a tiered level that gives you free parking. But by joining the season's credit card, they gave me 50,000 points and automatically gave me a platinum level, which gives me free parking at all season property. Same thing with the MGM in life. Gave me points and gave me pro level, free parking. If I was a server here in Las Vegas, I would have one of those credit cards. And every time somebody gave me cash, I would go over there and oh, bring yeah. it up on my oh, card, absolutely. put that cash in my pocket, yep. put those points in. You would be at a platinum to raw level. Uh, uh, you'd, be, you'd be top level no time. You'd be getting free hotels, free food, free airline miles, free, free, free. Only I, don't, I don't know if that's an illegal thing to do. No, no. You can, well, it, it some may be found upon. Some, yeah. In a casino, you can't do that. No, you can't do it in a casino. But if you were in a mom and pop restaurant or something like that you could do it problem is you and i know a lot of servers a lot of people in this industry do you think that they would have the discipline to put take that cash and put it in a bank or do you think they're going to go and spend that cash put this in their hand that's the only issue so if you're if you have the wherewithal and the self-discipline to take that cash at the end of the night and deposit it i think it's a great idea it's a great life plan. as a vegas local now, one of my other cards that I have is the Spirit MasterCard that they offer you on the Spirit Airlines. I fly back and forth to Dallas, Texas for free. And as a gold member now, I get all my luggage for free. I get my upgrades for free. My changes for free. It costs me five dollars and sixty cents tax to fly to Dallas. Upgrade the, the big, the big blue chairs in the front. Well, yeah, well that costs extra. As an American Express Platinum card member. I get to go to the lounge at the airport for free, have dinner and drink for free. Then I get $15 with an Uber cash per month free. Wow. So my ride back to uh, the place in Dallas is almost free. This is how rich people trick the system and stay rich and get rich. Now, you're not going to get rich by getting a couple of these shitty little credit cards. But the number one thing is, is I have a zero balance on those cards. The second I use that card, I go home and I pay it off instantly. $25,000 card. Go buy a new TV, use that card. Right? Need a couch, set of tires, $1,500, put it on that card. Bang. And then what happens is I can roll into Caesars, go to Gordon Ramsay's, put my points card up, and get a free deal. Now, some of you morons are going to use that for play slots, which is what, what they want you to do. How many times have I gotten a free compliment from you, from your points? Yeah. You know, you probably spent 100 grand gambling. Yeah. Maybe 90,000. Okay, back to the food. Should you come to, is it Capons or Capone? I, it's, no, there's no E, Capons. Capons? Yes, 100% yes. We spent. You haven't even talked about it, you should. Oh, I'm getting to that. $68. Now, my burger was 13, your burger was 14, onion rings were 7. Tofu fries were nine. I'm not, he's not worried. No, I'm not even gonna eat it. Coke Zero, Coke Zero, six, six. Double chocolate shake, eight. Five dollars tax. So I didn't, I didn't tip the server. I'm not tipping somebody who ends up. I, I'm not, I'm, I am a big tipper. Oh, it's a, it's a food court. I'm yeah. not tipping the yeah. person who rings me up at the food court. Okay, I'm not doing this. All right. We've got to put an end to this, especially when I know that even a busboy makes 20 bucks an hour. So, like, I'm sure they're making a decent living. And um, everybody wants a tip. Tip me. Hey, where's my tip? Right. So, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tipping somebody rings me up. Okay. She didn't bring, she didn't bring it to me. No. Okay. And the new union deal that they all got. Just they're all making well over 20 dollars an hour. Okay. Wow, that's that's double chocolate. Very dark, rich, uh, like dark chocolate, like like. Uh, is it too much? Is it too like in your face chocolate? It's got an aftertaste of chocolate, bitter, uh, like a Godiva, okay. with a little soft, you know, like. First you get the super sharpness, which when it mellows out, it's super creamy. Get the milk, 
um, I'm not drinking this. I'm going to have this much of it, and I'm throwing this away. That's what's going to happen. I think it's too no, rich. It's or just, yeah, there's kind of, you know, like, I'm not, it's good. Plus, I sat here too long. Yippee yappin. It's kind of run down a bit. They've got some amazing gelato ice cream over there and soft serve. It's off the charts. I am so full right now. Like, I feel like I'm going to pop. These onion rings are great, but I'm I couldn't even eat. I couldn't eat one more. I'm really dying. Good. I can't even drink any more of this shit. I'm dying. The official review does not suck. Very good. I think it's a. I don't know if I want to say good value, but it could be a good value if I'd you go priced back. it right. I'd, I'd go back. Go back. I'd, if I was here, I would go definitely eat there. Sure. No doubt about it. And the place is super nice. Um, I want to find out what else is here besides restaurant. Do they have any shopping? Is there stores here? I don't know. The casino is actually quite small. The casino is one of the, the criticisms. Yeah. They say for this huge building that the casino is very small. Yeah, it's a big building. It's a big hotel. Today, I, I can't let you hear any of it, but they play really good music here. I'm loving the music that they play here. A lot of places play, uh, let's just say the music we don't like. And this is, complain, but this is great. This is great. like uh, for people our age would be cool here. And demographic. And our, you know, it's like, a, I, I don't see any, um, I don't see any undesirables walking around. Nope. No Nobody's going to pick, you know, homeless people going to pick my pocket. You know what I mean? Just like. It's good, good vibe. Looks like they're bringing a Gucci store in, you know, um, but <clears throat> it's just really nice. And like, I uh, haven't seen any ugly chicks since I got here. Oh, there's one. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, here's one of the things about this hotel that I'm going to say is probably not that great, right? Um, there's, there's not a lot of shopping here. It's, I mean, if you want it to be an all-inclusive resort, there's like, I'm not seeing any stores. There's like things that says there's gonna be some stores. Not a lot of people gambling. Got some good food. Uh, I don't know what the pricing is, but you're not really super close to anything. You're gonna have to be taking an Uber or a cab or something. Cause you don't wanna be walking around this area. If you go north towards Fremont Street, you know, that's Naked City. You don't wanna go that way. And then you got a long way to walk south to get to anything. If you're trying to walk to, uh, you know, one of the other places, there's like Circus Circus across the street or whatever. It's not, it's not a great neighborhood. And it doesn't look like there's anything to do here. Like, I don't see any advertisements for any shows. I don't see any entertainment. I don't see any bands playing. I don't see a, they don't have a, there's, there's the only store I've seen yet. I don't know what they sell. I don't know. It's a salon. It's a salon. Okay. So like, there's nothing to do here except gamble and sleep in a really nice room and go to a nice restaurant. But entertainment wise, there's no entertainment other than gambling. And um, like, uh, I don't, there's no shopping. There's no bowling alley. There's no movie theater. Maybe there is, I don't know, but I, they're not doing a good job of advertising anything. I don't see anything, but Maybe a good daytime place. I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe if you're maybe if you're local, but but they're not a part of any of those other affiliates I talked about earlier. They're not part of Caesars, MGM, or Boyd or anybody. I don't even know who runs this place. And uh, with their parking situation, it really should be free because if you're limited to four hours. That means I got to get the f out of here before my meter clicks. You know. So to me, that kind of hurts. I think they should just have free parking to encourage people to come here and hang out because there's really no reason to come here, um, I'm, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> the burger was great. I would come here for lunch, but that's it. This is the nicest bathroom in town. I'm gonna start another channel called The Best Places to Poop in Vegas. That was pretty good. <laughs> is it good? Very nice. I was about to uh, call for a medic.